So we are at TCT 2017, and I'm here with uh, Joe Prusha, and yeah. you just announced the Mark III. How big of a deal is it, and, and you know, why did you change all these things? Well, because we can. We just simply cannot, uh, if we develop something, we simply cannot sit on the stuff and not release it. And I thought that all the features are so cool that we need to get them out before anyone else. What's your favorite feature on the Mark III? Well, my favorite feature, and that's what we started the development with, because uh, we have the large farm, uh, and we need to get those print out fast, uh, is the flexible bat. <laughs> so this is a uh, custom uh, alloy spring sheet, uh, spring steel sheet, which is powder coated with PEI. So there is no glue between the PEI and the and the thing. Which so it's, it's bonded directly onto a steel yeah. sheet, right? Yes. Which sorry, which makes it extremely extremely tough. So these are the clippers, and you don't uh, damage the surface, which I think is a very nice feature. And with the foils, with the, the gooey glue underneath, you can you know ding it quite easily. Sweet. What else? You, you made this thing a whole lot smarter than the Mark II, which was already did, kind did, of a reliable did, machine, did, but... Did we mention that the bed is magnetic, so this sticks to it? Right, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, 25 uh, high curry temperature magnets. They have working temperature up to 150, so they, do, they will not lose uh, the holding power. So you just uh, pop it in. You have two uh, uh, cutouts here for the pins on the bed, so it aligns every time. So that's, that's the bed. There are a couple of smaller, uh, smaller, uh, smaller things like it's mounted on nine points instead of six, like in the last one. So it's more straight, and the mesh bed leveling can be done in much higher resolution because uh, the probe triggers everywhere. So, since this doesn't have the, the probing points anymore, are you still doing the X Y squaring with this? Yes, you can. Uh, you you just remove the the plate, and there are the points on the on the bed underneath. So you can do the squaring, uh, but the X Y Z calibration should be much uh, much faster this time because uh, the frame is uh, harder to build crooked. So let's let's go over that real quick. So you have a new Y axis frame with uh, aluminum extruded profiles. Why is was it was it just time? Well, everybody. Uh, Everybody was asking about that, and you've seen a couple of printers uh, like the Haribo Mo and Zyber Mo, which uh, where people use it. And well, we 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 figured we tried out, and it turned out very nice. And it makes a bit stiffer machine. It's uh, a bit quicker to build, so why not? <laughs> but you you are still using the uh, eight millimeter linear rods. Um, any specific reason for that versus any other motion system? Uh, I mean, when we tried the linear rails, if it's a bit misaligned, they, they break easily. So we just stick with the rods and we are using bearings. Maybe, maybe we will use IGUS, but uh, when I show you the, the silent mode, I don't think you will, you will um, feel the need. So talking about the silent mode, you have a completely, well, completely new, but you have a re-engineered control board. So this is uh, Einse. Uh, and has very many, very many features. Uh, I think we, we will do a special video about it. Yeah. But the biggest part is that it's using Trinamic uh, 2130 drivers, but the proper way, not like on the silent step stick, we can talk to them with SPI, so we can set all the parameters. We can get the stall detection, which is one of the features. We can get the stealth chop, we can set the currents, everything we want, so that makes makes it a very powerful uh, motherboard for a 3D printer. So one of the things you're doing with the Trinamic drivers is you, you, you're skipping the end stops. So there are no end stops on X, Y, and Z. Of course, it's the probe. Yeah. Um, has that been weird to get used to, not having anything mechanical to stop it? Uh, it just feels normal. I mean, there's no, there's no change in anything. Uh, on the printer, you just, there, there's just not uh, not an end stop. And I see on the Mark III parts, we still have the mounting points for the end stops, at least on the x-axis. We need to remove those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of, of sensing and sensors and you know that entire topic, you did change a few things um, around the tool head. So, yeah. can you can you walk us through those real quick? Oh yeah, there's very many of them. So let me start uh, with the, with the fans. Uh, we are now using for for the. Hot end cooling, we are using real deal Noctua. Uh, they will not be in this beige color. They will, they will come black, but we are waiting on the delivery. 
Uh, both a uh, nozzle cooling fan and uh, a print cooling fan have RPM sensing because we've had a couple of users, you know, with a uh, strand of filament in the, in the fan which blocked it and then the nozzle melted. So, so printer will stop when it senses that the fans are not running or not running optimal. Also, the self-test is fully automatic. We can see if everything is correct, connected correctly. Uh, then, uh, if we are talking sensors, there's a Pinda Probe 2, which has something special in it. Uh, it's a thermistor. I've never seen induction sensor with thermistor inside. <clears throat> Supposedly, some have some sort of thermal you know, correction built in, but yeah, you, well, you actually measure the real temperature and yes. have, uh, I assume, some yeah. sort of lookup table yes, to correct yes. for the real time. Yes, the, the, the one with correction, it doesn't work very well, and we like to have it under control. So basically, there's one more, uh, one more wire coming to the bed, which uh, senses the temperature. And as you said, we can calibrate the offset because uh, all the induction sensors have a little bit of drift when they heat up. So that costs some people, if they are printing PLA, ABS, they have to uh, change the life adjust Z uh, for both of those. So this should be automatic now. Also, we, right. have, the, we have the filament sensor. Uh, it's uh, right here. Uh, it is special because it's optical. So it, it is kind of like the, the tracking sensor in, your, in an optical mouse, right? Yes. It's not, uh, it's not like what was used on end stops on 3D printers. It's, uh, it's basically an optical mouse sensor, which is industrial. And this allows us two things. It allows us to detect the presence of the filament and allows us to detect uh, the movement of the filament. So we can sense if the spool ran out and also if the nozzle is jammed. And you, you can also detect the jammed nozzle through the drivers when the, when the motor yes. actually stalls. Yeah, so when you're actually loading filament, we have multiple ways how to find out where it gets stuck. So it's very, very, very nice. And uh, the fact that it's uh, non-contact is very important because uh, we were testing like mechanical solutions on our farm and the filament always grinds off the mechanical s s uh, sensor. So this will not have this problem. Uh, so, so since that is uh, optical, does it work with clear filaments, PTGs, polycarbonates? Yeah, seems so. It's like with it, it's like with uh, laser mouse. You can all, you can use it on the on the glass surface too. Okay. So that's very nice. So when uh, when we are looking at the extruder, there's uh, uh, two more changes I can think of right now. Uh, we are using a bond tech by default, so the filament is driven from both sides, as uh, as you know. And we also are cooling the filament from both sides right now. Instead so you, of you have a you have a new fan shroud layout on yes, the bottom yes. right there. Yes, uh, there's new new, new uh, wire harness and stuff, but that's uh, that's not that's details. Anymore. Yeah. Yes. So on high level features, you you also have one that you showed yesterday, which is that you can basically pull the power cord and the printer is going to save its position. You want to yeah. you want to demonstrate that? <laughs> yes, we can. Uh, so, boom, and. That thing, that thing is definitely off. So there's nothing like keeping it powered on. Yes, there's no batteries. Okay, so well, there is a special circuit with trips, which trips by hardware all the heaters. So the energy stored in caps in the power supply uh, lasts a bit longer so we can go up and store the position which uh, makes it possible uh, to actually resume the print. So printer is right now uh, heating to the preset temperatures and will continue printing like nothing happened. Yeah, and it already knows, okay, you need to heat to 215, 55. It's already knowing that it's up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the things which, uh, which are saved. All right, and here we go. Yeah, so this is, uh, I would say, the most elegant solution you can have uh, for basically no added costs. So I'm quite eager to see if uh, some other manufacturers will uh, implement it shortly. Okay, on the topic of other manufacturers, um, you are still publishing the designs, the upgrades, you're still publishing that as an open source project. Yes, yes, uh, once, uh, once the first, uh, first one is shipped out the door, uh, the, the files will be on the GitHub. It's because we don't, um, th there are still some changes in the design and it's not always optimal to have people fiddling with it. And also somebody could uh, clone it before we actually start shipping it. <laughs> right. But, and uh, on that topic, it's, uh, I wonder it was why nobody cloned the Mark II 121. Oh. Oh. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. That was a, that was a, a modified one. Come on. <laughs> uh, 
And yeah, on, on the software side of things, of course, you are running the highly modified Marlin on the printer itself. Yes. On the PC side, you will still have your, your slicers, click through our yeah. config. Is, yeah. is there anything drastically different for the Mark III versus no, the Mark II? Basically, you can print Mark II G-code, but uh, the, the speed for the Mark III profiles will be bumped up. Uh, so I, I mentioned that we can print 200 millimeters per second, which uh, I will preset for the infill. I still think uh, PLA gives nicer, uh, smoother finish if you print it slower, so the parameters will be a bit slower. But yeah, it's it's pretty nice speed bump. And yeah, the new drivers and 24 volts, yeah, that's one of the new features. Uh, the printer is now completely 24 volts. Uh, we can run faster and cooler. And yeah, we also have the skip step detection, which, uh, you know, makes uh, running at Hold on, let, let, let me try that real quick. Yes, isn't that cool? I mean, uh, when we are we are showcasing it for the fifth uh, fourth day, and it still doesn't get you know uh, it doesn't get old. It's, uh, you, it's you just can't do that with any other or with a traditional printer that doesn't use any sort of expensive servos. Yeah, I, I think Zmorph has it, but they have encoders, which makes it ma makes it much more mar well much more complex. Yeah, and also if we are at the party tricks, we can do the filament. And this is the. Uh, this we'll is we'll the most, just let that print for a second. Yeah, this is the most nerve-wracking, as you see the filament going in, and then yeah, just you know waiting for it <laughs> to, to pause. And when that happens, the filament, uh, the, the extruder comes out and it um, retracts. Right, already, already moving there. Yes, you can place the new one in, and just just continue the print. And it's actually funny because uh, you, you know about our octo uh, color print feature. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the poor man's uh, color print. You don't have. <laughs> you to just rip the filament out. Yeah. And you don't have to go to the menu uh, and choose choose uh, choose change filament. You just snip the filament, prepare a new spool, you know, and you can go. <laughs> it actually has the same menu, so it asks you if the filament is if the filament is clear. And here we go. You just need to get. This out. And the print continues. Yeah, it just prints on like nothing happened. Yes. All right, let's let's talk about upgradability and availability real quick. So, I did see you do have upgrade kits for for your existing Mark II users. Yes. How far back will you be able to upgrade from to a Mark III-ish to a Mark 2.5-ish so, machine? So, so we have Mark 2.5, uh, which gives you the magnetic bat with the uh, PEI sheet. A uh, new extruder, an optical filament sensor, a new printer probe, Noctua fan, and s stuff like that. When we looked at all the stuff, because it's 24 walls and there's a new frame to upgrade fully to, to Mark III, you would just be left with motors and belts, basically. So we figured that upgrade doesn't make sense. But people still ask for it, so maybe maybe we will do a Mark, full Mark III upgrade where you, you just build Mark II out of spare parts. <laughs> Uh, right. It, it, yeah. it, it, I don't think it will be very cost effective uh, to, to do that. So that's why we came up with Mark 2.5. Yeah. And someone has also asked, uh, why can't I upgrade like the original, original uh, Mark 1 i3, so, basically? So basically, we, had, uh, we were selling 3 millimeter. Uh, we call it internally Mark 0. So you could actually upgrade from Mark 0 to Mark, uh, Mark 1, which was 1.75, then to Mark 2, and then to Mark 2S. So I think the chain of upgradability is pretty long, but we had to simply to, to bring all those new features and the reliability. We had to, you know, this is even though it looks pretty much the same from out the, from distance, and all the parts are redesigned. So it's it's a it's a huge change in, in parts and in components, yes, basically all just parts. In, in detail. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, we figured the Mark 2.5 is a nice uh, nice nice upgrade. Well, people still ask for full Mark III. So, but Cost effective and easy to do, but not overkill. Yes. So you, you did mention all the components that were switched out versus the Mark II or you know any other standard i3 style machine. Um, will these parts be available individually? Will I be able to buy the Mark 52 heated bed and the uh, PI coated sheet and the electronics board separately? So uh, as we did with Mark 42, we supply it as a replacement part, but to be honest, we are quite scared to offer it to anyone on the web shop because uh, the beds are very hard to make. The yield is uh, just barely enough that we can uh, supply our production. And if we open it uh, for sale, 
I am quite scared we would get thousands of orders. And also, you know, the mountings uh, are not uh, they are not compatible with normal i3 bat, so you know it would create a lot of uh, a lot of support. But we will. The electronics? Will we have those separately? Uh, well, it's Ultimachine machine board, so I, I think they will they will be selling it on the on the website. Okay, so you can so, get it through yeah, the official channels it's, basically it's when Everybody it's available. It. But we will be selling those freely uh, okay. in a, in a while, and they will be between 15 to 20 bucks. Well, that's uh, that's better than than buying a spare PI sheet plus shipping. I mean, yeah. Well, you will have shipping with this too. Yeah, sure. But uh, we are working on US warehouse and some some different uh, shipping options. But you can actually clip this on. Uh, you don't have to get magnetic bat to get uh, you to to use this. On the Mark II, you can just clip it on with binder clips. And I bet you can do it on some other uh, other machines yeah, too. It's, it's a standard format. I mean, it's yeah. how long? Two twenty or something deep. Uh, yeah. The the so the print area is 21 by 25, but there's a little bit of overlap. All right, so the Mark III is a bit more expensive than the Mark II. Yes. What? Why? Why? Why are you going up in price instead of down? Isn't that what the market wants? Uh, well, it's uh, about uh, serving most of the market. There's so much new stuff and so much more components, especially the sensors and Noctuas, and it's more expensive, and the sheets, you know. So we had to bump the price by 50 bucks. So the US price is 749, which I think is very reasonable. That is for the kit, right? And you're yeah. still offering the assembled one? Yeah, the assembled one is, uh, does cost the same. We, ha we had a bit more uh, space to, uh, to make it work. But the Mark II will remain because it's still a wonderful machine. It, on the print test, actually, they, they rank the same. Because they should. I mean, it's. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so it's a very nice machine, and we, uh, because we are doing it for long, and we know how how to make it, and the production is optimized, we can make it uh, five ninety nine. So that's hundred dollars cheaper. So there is a hundred. That, that is that is nice. Difference. Yeah. So I I think uh, we will be able to give the good quality printing to uh, wider wider audience. Sure, hope so. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, see you around. Bye. Should we do the electronics? Yeah.